Gold FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lotoka. Gold FM is number one in Nelly. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM only the classic hits here in Suva. Here about Batu Kola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sadi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In this bulletin, over a thousand people remain in evacuation centers. Landslides and damage bridges cut short Prime Minister's tours of affected areas in Neta Siri. And Ngawea villages tell of devastating floodwaters. Good evening, welcome to FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Tonight, 1,264 people remain sheltered in 27 evacuation centres in the Central Division. Most of them have lost almost everything inside their homes as they were caught off guard with the rain and flooding. According to DISMAC, they continue to assess and provide for the needs of the evacuees, including water, food and other relief supplies. Eleanor Trangayview reports. A large number of evacuees have yet to return home, even though their homes were not damaged by flood waters. They are there mainly because they do not have um, they do not have water supply in their respective homes. Eh? Yeah, uh, they are um, living in these uh, evacuation centers because these evacuation centers have uh, water tanks. Eh? So they are there because of the water. Following numerous requests from evacuees, a directive has been issued for food rations to be distributed to evacuation centers. In times of emergency, when people move into evacuation centers, they are to take with them. Uh, three days worth of uh, food supplies to sustain them for the first three days while they are in the evacuation centers. Eh? That is in time of uh, disaster and an emergency. After the three days then uh, government kicks in with uh, assistance. Eh? But uh, for this one um, the Prime Minister has directed that uh, we look into at least uh, providing some um, relief rations to the people that are living in these evacuation centers. Eh? because most of them were caught uh, by surprise with uh, heavy rain and floods in the area and they moved to the evacuation centers with what they have on their body and nothing else. Manasa Tangiva Kimbao says they have not been able to get the number of babies and children in evacuation centers but are attending to their needs. Since it's in the central division, we've taken it upon us to run to these evacuation centers and get the details ourselves. Eh? Uh, yeah, um, that's why we are moving some of the rations this morning. Um, some of these evacuation centers have uh, children, babies, yeah? and uh, we've done purchasing accordingly to suit the, the, the people out there. With the rain easing and flood waters gone in the central division, the DISMAC office is also expecting evacuees to clear out from the centers. The government, uh, this morning we are... Um, um, we are shifting and deploying some of the relief rations eh, to these evacuation centers to sustain them for at least one day, 24 hours. Uh, over the, you know, the, only the period that they are staying in these evacuation centers eh, and we expect them to move back to their homes um, by today or tomorrow. As of last night, 84 homes in the central division have been recorded as being partially damaged due to the flooding. The number is expected to increase following this month's assessment today. On the other hand, more people at evacuation centers are expected to return home tonight. Eleanor Turangayview, FBC News. Quick steps have been taken to restore essential services in areas in the Central Eastern Division that suffered the brunt of Tropical Depression 15F on Thursday. Heavy rain and flooding wreaked havoc in many places and the National Disaster Management Office says all hands are on deck to return things to normalcy. Ritika Pratap has more. The flooding earlier this week caught many by surprise. And due to the lack of preparedness, some citizens have suffered huge loss. However, the government has taken quick action to help the affected and assistance has been sought from the military. They have come aboard with uh, manpower, troops, 
and they were deployed to all areas in the Western Division, eh? from um, Wainandoi, Ngawia, Nekorokoro, here in Wailea, right down to Sawani, Wainimbokasi area. Eh? All those areas, the troops were deployed there to provide assistance in terms of uh, clearing of debris, eh? clearing of waterways, rubbish, just to assist uh, the public in getting back to, to normal. See? Health officials have also been deployed to affected areas to avoid any disease outbreaks. Manasa Thangida Kimbao says NGOs, including the Red Cross Society, are moving into evacuation centers to provide assistance. Thangida Kimbao says normalizing water and electricity is their priority so that the evacuees can go back to their homes. So, um, yes, we, FEA and uh, Water Authority is working hard on um, uh, restoring, uh, uh, restoring these um, essential facilities yeah, like water. And most of the, the areas that we are targeting, uh, FEA has put power back on, eh? so uh, water will follow suit. Meanwhile, the Fiji Electricity Authority has confirmed that power supply has been restored at Nava Hospital in Rewanga, Gawia, Matani Sivaro, Ramsami Poultry Farm, Nambukavesi ah? Village, Mao Village and Gilai Village. Oi. Queen Victoria School, Ratukanda Wulewu School, Korovo Town and Korovo Hospital are also receiving power now. The authority says some areas are still without power as they were unable to carry their inspections due to flooded or inaccessible roads. The NDMO targets to bring the Central Division back to normalcy at the latest by tomorrow. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. A preliminary assessment of the devastation on crops by the recent floods in the Waindina River, Naita Siri, and in the flats in Tailebu South and Wainibuka has been estimated to be around $1.4 million. Deputy Secretary for Agriculture Urain Buta told FBC News substantive loss of crops is much more significant in Waindina. Our people need to finalize that uh, once they are doing the actual survey out there in the field. Waimbuta says their priority is now to assess extent of damage and rehabilitate farmers through a food security program. Gawia village in Lamy is one of the two most areas badly affected by Thursday night's flooding. Eleanor Turangaviu visited the village today and witnessed the aftermath with villagers slowly rebuilding their homes and lives. Not much was spared when the flooding hit Gawia village. Almost all homes were flooded. If you look this side, the church is up there. You couldn't even see the fence of the church as it swallowed by the floodwaters. Fiberglass boat came right from Johnny Singh Park, right up to here. It may seem like a normal Saturday here at Gawia village, but the site paints a different picture. Behind me, destruction doesn't even begin to tell the stories of the villages being affected by the recent floods. All broken branches and trees coming down the river. I thought my house was going to go to it. <laughs> but the water was coming. This is the first time the water ever go under our house to reach the level of the ground. So I think my neighbors are really worse. They're washing nearly every day now. The Prime Minister of Urenge Mbanyamarama visited the village yesterday afternoon and has promised to help the villagers so they will not suffer the same things again. <coughs> One problem we face here in the village is the upper river. The Prime Minister and his team has seen it, and they have told us they have created a division and also a bridge here. He has said that's very soon. A company will come to rebuild it. We also caught up with Fiji Red Cross volunteers who are handing out food rations and relief supplies to the villagers. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, authorities work against time to restore essential services. Mirchi FM is number one in Singapore. FM I love Mirchi FM, it's so hot.
Thank you, thank you, Taupo, me. Mirchi FM is hot. Here at Rugby Town, Singatoka, love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is number one in Suva. It's hot. Hamo ingili lomba sa mirata hai. Toki ka watai ka Mirchi FM zinda hai. Mirchi FM, bow chalo chalo. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Welcome back to FPC News. Tropical Depression 15F has developed into a tropical cyclone coffee as it moves away from the Fiji group. Director of Meteorology Alipate Wangai de Lua says this means that rain is expected to ease in Vanualevu and Tavuni. Vasita Kotewaswasa reports. The weather office has assured Fiji will not be affected by tropical cyclone coffee. As of uh, 3 p.m. today, Tropical cyclone Kofi, with an intensity of 35 knots of Category 1, was located about um, 460 kilometers east southeast of Suva, or 300 kilometers west west northwest of Nukolofa in Tonga. It is uh, moving steadily towards the south southeast at about uh, 24 kilometers per hour, and at this stage, it does not pose any direct threat to Fiji. Wangai Velua says that tropical cyclone coffee is lying to the east of the southern Lao group and is moving away towards the southeast, bringing rain to the surrounding areas. The heavy rainfall caused flooding at Natokalau village in Matuku. <laughs> In Oneata, villages of Ovea have moved to higher ground due to the rise in sea level. The weather office is advising the public to refrain from crossing any flooded river or creek as rain will continue for the next 24 hours. Vasita Kotewasawasa, FBC News. Massive landslides and debris have prevented access to the interior of Waindina in Neta Siri. Mika Longa reports Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama's tour of the flood affected areas and the district was cut short today because of this. Villages along the Waindina River were in the direct path of the floodwaters. Malakai Naveve of Naburibore village told me his village was like an ocean on Thursday afternoon. Look at the white building back there. Three quarters of it was underwater, as well as homes near it. At Nambukaluka, like other villages along the Waindina River, people farm on the flats. In the wake of the deluge, they barely have anything left to sell at the market. We are supposed to be selling in the market today, but the floods have prevented us from that. Prime Minister of Orang and Marama's tour was interrupted by massive landslides and debris. Up ahead from where I am is the Wainawanga Bridge. As you can see, it is blocked by debris. The debris is in the form of uh, bamboo trees. And uh, just to my right here is Wainawanga Village, and I'm told that about 25 families or 25 homes were underwater during the floods. Prime Minister of Orang and Marama's tour was interrupted by massive landslides and debris. The entourage is again stuck here. Just up ahead there is a massive landslide. And just above me is a broken and uh, fallen power line. There are six landslides and two damaged bridges ahead of this location. According to the Agriculture Ministry, an 80% of crops along the Waindina River have been damaged. This, it says, will affect market supply. We are fortunate that uh, we are oversupplying the market at this point in time. There's a lot of root crops coming already, even before the flood. But uh, yes, definitely for, for this week, uh, we should be getting a lot into the market. But um, uh, after one and a half to two weeks, then we should uh, see 
a shortage in supply. Villagers upriver are using bamboo rafts to cut their produce downriver to the nearest markets. So one village is still without power and water. We are trying to what can be normal again next week. Prime Minister Vorenge Manimurama and his government delegation told villagers that relevant authorities are trying their best to restore services. Mikolonga, FBC News. The Electoral Commission has confirmed that no decision has been made on the electoral decree as yet. Political parties have been calling for work on the electoral, electoral decree to be fast-tracked and the Commission has confirmed that they are now in the process of looking at the second draft. The members of the Electoral Commission say they are working closely with the Solicitor General's office in putting together the electoral decree. We expressed to them our views on some of the provisions of the uh, electoral the draft electoral decree. Uh, they said they would take, uh, take it under consideration. We hope to meet with them again and we will be also be presenting them a, a written paper, so to speak, uh, of, uh, so that it's clear that they understood us as to where we're coming from on, on the different provisions of the actual decree. Chen Ban Yang says they are looking to have another meeting with the Solicitor General's office before the final decree is promulgated. However, they will not be able to confirm when the decree will be ready. The decision is not really ours because uh, we, we, we've been given an opportunity uh, to, uh, uh, to comment on it. And I think they will have uh, uh, a lot to digest uh, after they, they, they have our comments. The Commission Chair says the appointment of the Supervisor of Elections is being put aside at the moment. Uh, because we were all, uh, all hands on deck with regard to the decree, uh, that has been actually put to the side for, the, for, the, for, for a short while because uh, our focus has been primary on this particular uh, decree and we just feel that it's something uh, important that needs to be addressed uh, as a matter of, matter of priority. The Commission is currently interviewing people to fill positions in the Elections Office. The experts believe the office will need almost 14,000 staff when the country goes into elections. Many of these staff will be holding temporary positions. Ritika Pratap, FPC News. Fiji's construction industry is booming and more effort should be put in to ensure that our products are of the highest quality, says the Minister for Trade, A.R. Sayed Kayum. He was speaking at the official launch of the Cyclone certification for Profiles and Roofing Limited manufacturers last night. Vasita Kutewaswasa reports. Local manufacturers have in the past concentrated on a high markup on a particular product to try and capture the market and get protection from government, making their money in the process. Government says this has to change. It is important that if Fiji is to be riding this wave of this trajectory, that the products that we have, the output that we have, the quality of people that we have, the construction that we have is of sound quality. Because in that way, we will be able to lift our profile. And that's precisely what we are encouraging. Sayyad Kayum says that we have to ensure that Fijian-made products will not be compromised. A lot of the manufacturing and investment that currently is going on or taking place or plans are being laid out for it has been precisely because of the consistency in the fiscal policies that have been put out by the Benin-Rama government. The minister says Fiji's construction industry is doing well. At the moment, the construction industry, some would say, is booming. Some would say it's very robust. At least there's a huge demand for work. There's also a huge demand for architects and engineers because there is quite a lot of activity taking place in the economy. And post-elections, there's obviously it's, it's going to increase a lot more. Sayed Kayum says while there are efforts being undertaken to brand Fijian-made products, there is still room for improvement. Vusita Kote Masawasa. FBC News. Coming up on FBC Sports, female footballers step up. And VG Bodybuilding gets a new president. Today, FM is number one here in Singataka. We are today FM in Lambasa. It's not! My favorite station in Nandi is Today FM. Uh, listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks in Suba. I love Today FM because they play all my songs. We love Today FM at Vudiva Lombasa. Yeah, it rocks! I love Today FM because it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.
welcome to FBC Sports. Final Vulivuli has worked hard to get to get to where she is now in the football fraternity. She holds much respect on the local scene for her prowess with the whistle as Fiji's first female referee able to command Super Premier Games and for being one of four women in the Oceania region selected to officiate at FIFA events. Now she wants to share that opportunity with fellow female footballers and she started with a workshop held in Suva today. Elena McDonald reports. She challenged herself 10 years ago to become a top match official. She's now one of the country's best and she's hoping others can achieve the same feat. Our main aim this year for the women's division in football is to ensure that by IDC, the women's inter-district championship that we have all female match officials. Mm -hmm. So we want a women's competition this year to be the first, that we have a women's competition with all females of female officials. So no. it's my job to actually develop them. Following in her footsteps is this 24-year-old who was lucky enough to get chosen for a FIFA event last week. The referee, you need to work for it, and especially in the men's competition as in Fiji, mm -hmm. Well, men's are only officiating the men's competition and being a women's referee, I, I think it's a good good idea to bring up this workshop to and uh, to encourage women to take up referee in mm. Fiji. Weather conditions affected today's workshop turnout, but it didn't dampen the spirits of these young women eager to learn more. Actually, it's just the beginners, a referee's course. Uh, most of them are players or former players. So basically, we just want to upgrade their knowledge of the game, and it's just an entry-level course. Uh, in a month and a half or two months' time, we'll have another refresher course where we sort of try and uh, upgrade their knowledge and take them to an intermediate level. The workshop is just the beginning for better things to come for women's football. Vuli Vuli is one of only three female referees in the region who are FIFA accredited and considering the perks she's experienced already, it's comforting to know that the same could happen for any of these young women in the near future. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. Bodybuilding Fiji has a new president. Elected at the National Federation's annual general meeting in Suva today, YMCS Chief Executive John Lee. Lee takes over the reins from current Fastenock president, Reg Sandy, who did not seek re-election at the AGM held at Olympic House. Sandy was the foundation president when Fiji Bodybuilding was founded in 1994 and welcomed Lee on board as a fresh face to take over leadership. Already on his list of things to do will be to oversee the organization of four bodybuilding competitions this year, starting with the Bucks Classics in Suva in early April, the Western Championship in June, the Mr. Suva in August and the Fiji National Championship in October. Also holding AGMs today was Netball Fiji and the Fiji School Swimming National Federations. Showers were the order of the day today. All centres had showers from the morning right through this afternoon. On the temperature chart, Savu Savu and Lambasa recorded the highest, hitting 32 degrees. Suva had the lowest at 30 degrees. Tomorrow there will be showers across all centres as well. Now for the further outlook, south to southwest winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas and moderate southwest swells. Recapping the headlines, picking up the pieces, Fijians recover from floods, tropical depression finally moving away from the group, and Prime Minister gets first-hand account of flood damage. This week's poll question, are Fijians taking the dengue outbreak seriously? Visit our FPC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. Or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's news tonight. I'll be back again tomorrow. Until then, you have yourselves a safe and enjoyable weekend. Nimo de Manda. Aku enak koro kona tali tali, mandau tali tali di antara baru radio Fijuan. Kita tunggu isu untuk tali tali kena baru radio Fijuan, mesti senyal mutu. Kita tali tali kena radio Fijuan.
Na Radio Fiji One and the Teletech Talanga e Sipoka. A station in Machino Pinatia na Radio Fiji One. Na Radio Fiji One na dumoi bitin bonga ni BNN.